is the biggest lesson you learned from the women who raised you? The woman, my mom, the biggest lesson? My mom, I don't know about if I can point to one thing that my mom and she is responsible for teaching me. Uh, I guess love thyself, you know? Be comfortable with who you are, you know? I think that's an important thing my mom taught me. Describe your mom in three words. <laughs> yeah, she's not gonna see this. Uh, let's see here. My mom in three words, crazy, zany, a little wild. <laughs> what are you currently reading? Uh, currently, uh, Thomas Sowell Reader. Do you have a favorite song these days? A favorite song, man, that's another tough one. I, I got a lot of favorite songs, you know. Um, if you'd asked me that when I was a teenager I, and I had to sum up one song, uh, when Doves Cry says a lot to me in a lot of different ways by Prince, um, except for the fact that there's a lack of a bass line, which is insulting. <laughs> but uh, it, that's a hard one, you know? I have a lot of favorite songs. Where's the most beautiful place you've traveled to? I guess Hawaii, you know? Besides the Napa wine country, but yeah, you know? Where's your happy place? My happy place is in my home studio. What's yeah. one thing about you that surprises people? something that about me that surprises people um man that i don't like to cook i don't know <laughs> what are you excited about coming up in 2021 i'm excited that people are going to get back to normal in a good way though i mean the good parts of normal uh, i'm excited about people getting back together gatherings uh live music you know going to going to concerts and shows and stuff man you know that's what i'm excited about you know and, and hopefully some of the some of the crazy noise that's going on going away. That's what I'm excited about. Can't wait. Have you ever been starstruck or close to it? I think I have been close to starstruck. You know, uh, I've met a lot of people, as you can imagine. Um, you know, I met James Brown. That was a thrill. Uh, I met Prince. And I really thought I was, I, when I knew, I, I, it wasn't by happenstance that I met Prince. It was a meeting that he had called. Um, with some Bay Area radio people back about 20 years ago or so. And um, I thought I was going to be all nervous. And, and actually, I was, you know, the drive down to the place where we're going to meet him and all that and have this conversation with him and stuff. But then once I met him, man, it, it's Prince right there. Dude, it's Prince. I had to keep telling myself because it was just too calm for me. Maybe it's surreal, but it was just like, okay, it's Prince. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you want to play you in a movie? Who would I want to play me in a movie? That would be tough. Uh, just right off the top, I, I, Bruno Mars. What advice would you give your 18-year-old self if you could? Oh, okay. Uh, I would tell my 18-year-old self, do not stop playing bass guitar for any length of time. Send the demo to make Cola Records in L.A. I would tell my 18 year old self that that would have that would have changed everything. What is a dream that you haven't yet achieved? What I would have achieved had I sent that tape to make Cola Records. <laughs> you know what? I would like I would like my song, Thank You, to to become a hit. When Happy. did you write that song? I, I wrote it in 2019. Uh, did the video for it that same year, actually at this location. And uh, it hasn't been on the radio yet. You know, I don't know. And the irony is, I don't even know how songs get on the radio. I know that's really ironic for someone who's been in radio for 30 years. <laughs> so why do I do it? Because I love it. But that's one thing I haven't achieved yet. I haven't had a number one or top 10 radio hit. I hope it happens, but I'm not waiting for it. It's not going to stop me from making music. <laughs> what is something you know about music that no one else knows? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> What's your must-have beauty secret before you go on TV? Uh, let's see here. My must-have beauty secret before I go on TV. Um, kind of craving it right now. Chapstick, baby. What frightens you, or what's your biggest fear? Scary movies frighten me. I don't watch scary movies, horror movies of any kind. Uh, one of my biggest fears, again, I, I hate to sound all, you know, kind of cliche or foo-foo, but... 
you know, one of my biggest fears is that, you know, our world is not going to go back to the good parts of what made it awesome. I, uh, that's a fear of mine. I want people to get back together and, you know, sing in harmony again instead of all this dissonance, instead of all this, you know, people act like it seems like there's too many people among us that want to win more than they want to be right. I'll take an L if we, if that means that that's how I find the truth. You know, I don't need to win. I need to be right though. And I would hope that a lot of people would think that way. Just stop trying to win. We'll win in the end if we're all on the right side of it. Mm. If musicians were allowed a victory dance after each song they played, what would you do? That ridiculous thing that Ozzy does. Hey, what? <laughs> we can't go! Can, <laughs> nice. What is your favorite part about being in the entertainment industry? My favorite part? I love I love being a performer on stage. I love being in a band. Um, I love singing on stage. That's my favorite part, you know, um, because... I am not one who just jumps around for the sake of jumping around, trying to get applause or trying to get, you know, people to like me more or laugh at me more or anything like that. That's kind of clown bait ish to me. Um, but what I do at home by myself, you know, rocking out with my pretend audience and all that, uh, because it's, it's the realest part of me, you know, being a musician, being a singer, a songwriter and yeah, that's my favorite thing. The fact that I, something that I do that I've created in my own head that people appreciate in an, out in an audience or, you know, in a live setting. So I dig that, that part of being an entertainer. Right? That's kind of a, sometimes the, the, the term entertainer, I don't know if I always like it because it sounds like I'm just trying to do a little, do a little dance to make people, it doesn't seem authentic and I don't like that. Mm. I'm up there for a purpose and if you dig it that's awesome if you're entertained by that fine <laughs> what's the best thing about being a dad the best thing about being a dad wow uh i think i'm experiencing 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 it now my son is an adult now and one of the best things about it is despite what it takes to be a parent, a dad and a mom. Uh, if it's ever 100% fun and easy all the time, I'm pretty sure you're screwing something up. But if you find yourself as a mom or a dad and you're dealing with real challenges because you're trying to do the right thing and your kid doesn't always understand, but you stand your ground as a parent, like a parent should, then everybody wins in the end. And your kid, and your kid does especially. And while we can't really pick what exact role or path our kids are going to choose in life and they'll make some mistakes as well uh the moral code that you implant in them by being there in their life the ent their entire life that'll always be with them and then as they get older and then they go out on their own even though they may not look like you they may not choose the same kind of things that you would choose the way they go about making those decisions comes from you and when you start to see that I think that's the best part of being a dad. When they're little, you're just having fun, you know? But uh, when they get older, that's when, that's when, that's when it all kicks in. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm at a point in time in my life right now where I'm starting to see that in my own son. I don't agree with everything he's doing right now. Don't get me wrong. This is a lot of times when I say, hey dude, but I gotta, I gotta, let, him, I gotta let him do his thing. Because at the end of the day, he knows how I think about things. And he knows what I might think of some things. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes I'd approve and sometimes not. But I know what I built inside him and I'm good. And he's good. What's the hardest thing about being a dad? All that, everything else <laughs> I just said. <laughs> hardest thing about being a dad is, is, is reminding yourself, look, when you were a kid, things weren't always great. When you were a kid, your parents pissed you off. And if they were good parents, they probably pissed you off a lot. So really trying to remind yourself, be, be part of being a good parent, in my opinion, is realizing you're gonna piss your kid off. And in that moment, it's easy for me to stand here and say it. It's easy to read it somewhere, have you know somebody say it to you. But when you're in that moment, that's when it's tough to stand your ground 
and literally destroy the the day your kid's trying to have for his or her own good. That can be tough. It always takes practice every time you go through it. But again, it works out in the long run. And your kids always thank you for it. Oh my God, Dad, thank you so much. Or Mom, thank you so much. I couldn't believe what I was about to do and you totally saved me. Jesus, save your kid. Piss him off. (laughs) (laughs) Singer, songwriter, producer, musician, radio and TV personality. Am I leaving anything out? Child of God. No, you're not leaving anything out. I'm, I'm, that's all me. Thank you so much for allowing me some time. Did you have fun today? I did. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say before we wrap up? Uh, enjoy life, party people. You know, uh, don't let all this noise that's going on around right now get you down. And for goodness sake, think with your own brain. Don't let anybody tell you what to think. Make it make sense in your head. And it's easy. Life is simple. It can be. Don't make it too complicated. That's what I like to leave you with. Thanks, Morris. Peace.